it's gonna happen. Just you watch. <laughs> like the morning sun inviting the dawn to break. Like the joy. Everybody, it's Saturday, December 15th, and I am here to do my weigh-in and make a quick update for you guys. I hope that you guys all had a great week. Last time you guys saw me, I was in quite a stressed out mood, and I am feeling much better. As you can see, my suitcase is packed. I have another one right here. This green suitcase is filled with gifts for family and friends. And then I have my outfit that I think I'm pretty much going to wear. I have two pairs of jeans to choose from. I went to Muni Court yesterday. I got all of that taken care of. Um, I'm feeling a lot less stressed out. I still have a homework assignment due tonight. And I have a homework assignment due tomorrow night. And then I have something due on Wednesday when I'm, when I'm going to be in Florida. I'm just feeling a little more under control. I have things taken care of, Ren is feeling better, you know, everything is kind of falling into place right now, so I'm feeling much better. So on top of feeling pretty good, feeling pretty grounded and centered and happy, I had a loss this week, if you can believe it or not. I weighed in last week at 197.2, and today, yesterday, I weighed in at 195.4. Holy cow! That means I lost 1.8 pounds this week and I am down 14.6 pounds total. Yay! <laughs> Yay! I am so proud of myself throughout this crazy stressful week. I had many opportunities. I shared with you guys. I had many opportunities to binge, to pig out. Even today, I've been home alone pretty much packing for the majority of the day and um, that's when I tend to be triggered you know to binge is when I'm here by myself and I'm like oh I can eat in secret well I did I feel like I've do, been doing really well so for the beginning of the week I told you in my one of my last updates that I've been calorie counting again well I was doing really well with that and when Ren went to the emergency room I pretty much like threw that out the window and I've always been the type of person to eat when I'm stressed out. I shared with you guys in my video that I had the opportunity to binge, and I didn't. Well, um, I, I cannot believe I didn't gain weight this week, in all honesty, because I've been feeling really stressed out, and when that happens, I tend to eat. But I guess maybe there was something deeper within me that knew that I really wanted to try this week and get to a little bit lower of a weight. So I'm not going to reach my 20 pound goal. I do still have a couple weeks until Christmas, but I am leaving on Tuesday. So I have tomorrow, which is Sunday, and I have Monday. And there's no way I'm going to lose over five pounds in those two days. But honestly, I feel pretty fantastic at the weight I am now. I did run into a few little problems here when I was packing because I was filling up this big suitcase right next to me and I was pretty much packing jeans and sweaters and you know just how I would like to dress here and then I had this realization I'm like what am I doing why am I packing sweaters and jeans I need to be packing shorts and tank tops like what the heck so I went on Facebook and I was like help I don't know how to dress in Florida anymore. Like People help me out. And um, some people gave me some suggestions. And um, I really have to say, for the most part, my summer clothes still really don't fit all that comfortably. I mean, they do. But the last time I wore a lot of my summer clothes, like my shorts and my cute little skirts and stuff, last time I wore them, I, was, I think I was still at least five pounds thinner you know, from the time when I went to Europe. So I kind of ran into a little bit of a roadblock there. Um, so what I ended up doing was packing mostly jeans and I cut off a couple pairs of jeans that were actually just a tiny bit big on me. I decided to make them into cut off shorts. So 
hopefully that will suffice. I'm bringing my one pair of blue polka dot shorts, which you guys have seen before. Um, they are a little bit tight still, but I'm just going to bring them and hopefully within the time that I'm there I'll be able to wear them or fit into them or whatever. And then I'm bringing a few pairs of cutoff shorts that I made. And then I'm bringing a pair of shorts from H&M. But I'm bringing a lot of um, sweatery kind of material things like this because I don't really, I'm bringing a few t-shirts and I literally maybe have 10 shirts. You know, I have the majority of sweaters and things like this. So kind of hoping that it'll cool off a little bit. It's in the 80s right now. There, I can't even comprehend that. It's, let's see, I don't even... I can't even remember what 80 feels like. It hasn't been 80 here since I've moved here. At the moment, it's it's kind of raining outside. It's 48. I don't even know what 80 feels like. Double the temperature it is right now. I just, I don't know. I think I'm going to have a rude awakening when I get there and I'm like, oh my god, why did I pack so warm? I looked at the 10-day forecast and it said that the low in a few days is going to be in the 50s and then the high is going to be in the 70s so hopefully it'll just continue to stay cold because all of my cute clothes that I have are sweaters and jeans and oh god I don't even own flip-flops anymore so I'm I'm going to have a little bit of trouble. I'm just going to do the best that I can with what I'm bringing. And I am bringing a few dresses too. I'm bringing my nice fancy dress that I showed you guys for the wedding. I'm bringing those nude flats and that statement necklace, which I'm so excited to wear. I'm probably going to bring these two necklaces as well. Um, it's my little ooh la la from Kate Spade and then there's a little bow. So I like them kind of paired together. And um, I'm going to be bringing one pair of sandals that I bought from H&M and my running shoes because I'm hoping to get some exercise in while I'm there. Since I won't really have any other responsibility, I'm kind of hoping that I can just wake up and go for walks around my neighborhood, maybe start jogging again because that's like the original epicenter of where I was learning to run. So maybe I can get re-motivated again when I'm there for that. And I'm bringing probably three or four little dresses. I'm bringing uh, maybe three pairs of jeans plus the ones I'm wearing, which is maybe a lot. I'm bringing maybe five or six t-shirts and I, I'm going to be there for like a month. So I need to be able to pack in this huge suitcase. It's pretty much filled to the brim. I have my hair straightener. I have well, I've got two sizes of hair straighteners and kind of high maintenance like that. Um, so I'm bringing my hair straighteners, I'm bringing all of my skincare, I'm bringing all of my, not all of my makeup, all of my makeup wouldn't fit in my makeup case, but um, <laughs> I have a problem, I know. I thought that I would read Food for Thought since it's been a little while since I've done that. <laughs> December 15th. Warning. Danger ahead. When a thought or impulse arises which threatens our program, we often feel a twinge of fear at the same time. This feeling of fear is a warning that whatever we are contemplating may be hazardous to our health. Not to heed these warning signals is the height of folly. We have learned from sad experience that certain thoughts and actions are not for us if we want to maintain our abstinence and our sanity. When we are confronted with a difficult choice, we need to listen carefully for the small voice of conscience which warns us of disaster ahead if we choose foolishly. By paying attention to the small warning twinges of fear, we can avoid thoughts and actions which go against what we know is best for us. The meditation is, may I heed the danger signals. Well, I think that's kind of interesting because I'm going home <laughs> in a few days now. I've actually been kind of afraid that I'm going to get there and I'm going to fall off of this mentality that I have now. I mean, I've shared with you guys the past few weeks I've been feeling really scared 
that I have this expectation to look a certain way or to be a certain way when I'm there. And I know that that is all in my head. But it's this weird pressure that I have felt. And it's there, still lingering a little bit, despite the, the knowledge that I am beautiful no matter what size I am. Oh, there's just so much there around the holidays. I'm not even talking about food, in all honesty. I know that there's going to be tons of food that's going to be very tempting around the holidays. Fully aware of that. No, I'm, I'm even more aware of that voice inside my head. That negative voice telling me that I'm not good enough, that I'm not worthy, that I'm not beautiful. And yes, I've been in therapy this entire year working for the strength and the courage to be able to acknowledge that I am beautiful and that I am worthy. And um, in therapy a few weeks ago, I was telling Emily, my therapist, that I've been feeling really worried about um, feeling different when I get there, like feeling like I'm not beautiful and feeling like I am fat and like I'm hideous and I'm afraid that being around the people who have told me that I am fat and not beautiful, um, I'm afraid that being around them again is going to make me digress or, I don't know, revert back to my old negative self, my old negative ways, the way I look at myself. I don't want that to happen. So she was telling me that I should get a little totem or like a little token, something that reminds me of my inner strength and something that reminds me of who I am and my inner voice and how strong and beautiful and worthy I am. So I was really trying to find something and I was having a really hard time. Originally, I wanted to find some sort of shark token. Um, like a shark's tooth necklace or um, a little symbol of a shark, like a little pendant or a, a bracelet with a shark on it. And I'm not sure if I ever told you guys about the thing, about my dreams that I was having about sharks. To make a long story short, I was having these dreams about sharks and there was a few dreams that I had uh, like a long time ago, like six months ago. I was in this boat with Ren and we were being rowed and there was no land around us at all and something happened where um, he fell into the water and I fell in with him like or dove in after him or something. All of a sudden we looked up and the rowboat was gone and there was nobody to be seen and there was no land anywhere so we realized we had to start swimming and so we were swimming and swimming and swimming and then all of a sudden I realized what we were doing. And the water became really thick and black. And I realized that there were sharks below us. And I got terrified. I was filled with this feeling of fear. Like, beyond fear. Like, terror. And I started swimming as fast as I could in the molasses. And eventually I was moving fast enough that I started to kind of run on top of the water. And then I started to run so fast that I just took off and I was flying. That dream was really perplexing to me. I did a lot of research about it. I even talked to one of my professors at school about it who had had some dream therapy practice in his life. Then, a few months later, I had another dream where... So strange it was like... Um, I was in this dream with a lot of these really popular girls from my history of schooling and you know how those there's those groups there's like the popular girls and then there's like you know other groups but anyway so it was all of these girls from high school that I remember being popular they were all standing on the edge of this cliff like just in the middle of nowhere and they all kind of started jumping off this cliff and there were sharks down there and they were like come jump off the cliff with us and I was like there's sharks down there are you kidding me no way so rather than jumping off the cliff I found this little pathway down the edge of the hill and I made my way down to the water and sat there and I remember the people weren't there anymore like all of a sudden it was just me and the water 
and I saw the sharks swimming out there, but I was too afraid to go into the water. And then I had this dream. After I read Eating in the Light of the Moon, and I was reading it really consistently, like I'd wake up in the morning and the first thing I would do is pick up that book. And then at lunch when I had a break, I would pick up the book. And on the bus when I was on my way home, I'd pick up the book. And before I went to bed, I would pick up the book. It was like two nights into reading that book, I had this dream that I was standing in the middle of this apartment that I'm in now, and Ren was here. And I was like, how can they keep us down here? How can they just throw us down here like we're prisoners? It's so dark. There's no sunlight down here. Like, it's, it's a dungeon. And so I ran to the landlord, and I was like, you need to put us in a new apartment. And he was like, well, this is a great option for you. Look, we have this availability. And all of a sudden, there was this whole other part to this apartment building like this is like an old victorian apartment building in san francisco it's not by any means beautiful and shiny and new and all of a sudden there was this new extension on top of this building it was like the victorian on the bottom and then on top of that was this sleek shiny pointy um like blackish gray really shiny building and this woman walked us up there and showed us this apartment. And we walked in and it was beautiful. It was like sunlight everywhere and all the doors in the apartment were open. It was just like really airy and you could go from one room to the other. And we went to this one door and it was closed and I was like, what's in there? And she was like, that's the aquarium room. And I was like, aquarium room? She's like, yeah, let's go in and take a look. And we went in and it was just this like, clear like it was like this white room with uh, a huge like floor to ceiling length aquarium throughout the entire room and the room was circular so you'd walk in and all around you was this aquarium and then there was this like circle in the middle where you could stand and look at everything and there was this button on the wall and I was like what does that button do she's like you don't want to press that button if you do then all of the water will start overflowing from the aquarium and it'll start to fill up the whole room. And um, in the aquarium, it was really important that for me to mention that it, it was just gorgeous. It was the most beautiful aquarium. I remember the water was like crystal blue. It was just gorgeous. There were lots of fish and starfish and coral, things like that. And there was a shark in the aquarium room. We decided we were going to move into this apartment and we started moving all of our stuff up and there was a point in the moving experience when I was there in the apartment by myself and so I like slowly opened up the aquarium room door, went over and I pressed the button and all of the water started to overflow into the room and it was starting to fill up really high. So I was swimming and the fish started to pour over the sides and they were swimming with me and the shark came over the side of the aquarium. So literally in the middle of the aquarium, all, it was like filling up, all of it was filling up in the middle of the aquarium and the fish and the water and the shark all came into the part where I was and it was filling up so high that I couldn't breathe. It was so terrifying. I just remember feeling like I was gonna drown. And the shark came over to me and said in some weird way, um, just press the button on the wall. And for some reason, my hand just went to the button and it lowered back down. The water level lowered back down a little bit. And the shark was there next to me and said, even I need to breathe. Even I need to come up for air. And I get really emotional when I'm telling that dream because it's just so radical that I was able to communicate with this deep primal part of who I am. And the fact that I've dreamt of sharks before, it's really kind of weird that I had this weird connection with this, this deep thing within me, that shark, that thing that I'm running from, the thing that's scary, you know, I'm not supposed to be able to be in touch with that because it's below the water, it's below the deep dark 
surface. It's in the unconscious area. It's scary. It's in the unknown, you know. The shark said, even I need to be able to breathe. Even I need to come up for air. And the shark opened up its mouth and I just remember seeing all of its teeth and he just took this huge breath of air with his mouth, even though that's not how sharks breathe. I know. But it's the symbolism of it. The symbolism is that I was once afraid of that, of the shark. In the dream I had with Ren, I was terrified of the sharks below us. I was for sure 100% gonna be eaten by that shark. I was terrified. So I swam so fast that I was able to run on water and fly away from the thing that was scaring me. I was running away from something. I was, I had the opportunity to confront it. The water got sticky and thick and I ran away from it. And I wasn't brave enough to go in the water in that dream where people were jumping off the cliff. I sat there and watched them. I knew they were there. I just sat there on the beach and watched them. And then eventually I moved into an apartment and when you dream about rooms or buildings or houses or things like that, you're dreaming about yourself. It's the unconscious mind symbol for you because you are the home of your organs. It's really interesting. It's according to Freud. It's part of his dream theory. But anyway, so I moved into an apartment that had an aquarium room with a shark in it. I was getting comfortable with the shark. Then the shark saved me from drowning. Then the shark assured me that it needed to breathe too, that it was okay to communicate with this, that this thing that's within me, this, I don't know, this thing that I was afraid to communicate with, it can breathe. It can be out there in the, in the world. That's, I'm sorry that took so long to explain, but I just thought it was important to let you know that I'm dreaming of sharks. The shark means something special to me. Fierce power. I have no other way to describe it. That's who I am. That's my voice. Deep down inside me, I'm allowed to have an opinion. And I'm allowed to have those sharp teeth. I can have all of that. And I was just afraid to communicate with that. The way that my mind communicated that with me was in the image of a shark. So I was trying to find a shark totem or like a shark, uh, you know, just like a necklace with a shark's tooth on it or something. And I'm sure I will find one eventually. But what I want to show you is that my friend at work gave me something that I'm going to use as my little token of remembrance to kind of ground me while I'm in Florida. Let me get it for you real fast. I can't remember if I've shared those dream stories with you before, so if I if I have, I apologize. But I don't think I have, and I'm surprised I haven't, because it's kind of a huge part of my journey. You know, being able to communicate with this really deep thing within me that my unconscious mind turns into the symbol of shark. So anyway, my friend gave me this as a Christmas present, and I have no idea because I hadn't really told her about me needing something to go to Florida and kind of use it to ground myself, but she gave me this. It's a little symbol. <laughs> it's a fortune cookie. It's a little silver fortune cookie, and I think it's incredible. I think it's amazing. I just absolutely love it. I mean, because I was telling you guys that I've been really looking forward to my yogi tea meditations at night. There's been a lot of really crazy messages that I've gotten from yogi tea, and it's kind of helped me along my journey in the past few months. I get these little messages, and I'm reminded that I am beautiful, and I'm, I am worthy, and that I am a powerful person, and that I deserve to be happy. So she gave me this, and those yogi tea things kind of remind me of a fortune cookie. So you open it up and there's a little note inside of it. And this is the note that it came with. Like she, when she bought it, she didn't realize that there was a note inside of it. She just gave it to me like that. But when you open it up and take a look at the message inside, it says, proud of me. Oh, I just love it. So I'm going to take this with me to Florida, and I'm going to use it and hold on to it and use it as a reminder 
of where I am right now and where I have been and where I have come from because this mentality that I have now it's really new it's really fragile and um, I know that the people in my life that love me are going to want to support me and want me to be happy and they're gonna love me no matter what I look like I don't know I just I needed this I needed something like this to kind of ground me and I think it's absolutely beautiful it actually kind of looks like a little Pac-Man I can't believe I got that message I'm just so grateful for everything that I have right now. I'm packing that in my carry-on bag and I'm going to take it out and hold it if I need some reassurance during my trip and I'm going to take it out and hold it and read the message when I get to Florida and if things are kind of being stressful. Seriously, you guys have been so great to me and I really want to thank you for spending time with me writing your little comments and liking my videos. It just makes me feel so lucky. I really do appreciate it. Well, so you may see me again on Monday. Maybe I'll make one last little update before I get ready to go. Maybe I'll show you my outfit. I have it right here, but maybe I'll show you my outfit that I'm going to be wearing on the plane as a little like outfit of the day video because I was kind of doing that for you a little bit. Um, I'm going to be wearing that same sweater that I showed you the other day. I just think it's so cute. So I'm going to pair that with like an oxblood colored cardigan and some jeans and my boots and a pair of nice warm fuzzy cozy socks. And um, I'm going to be taking this bag on the plane as my carry-on. Yes, it's humongous. I know. It's pretty much the biggest Kate Spade bag that I have. It's definitely the biggest bag that I own. And it's going to come in handy in this moment on Tuesday. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And I will talk to you again very soon. Bye. She is unstoppable.